We're live. We are, oh, we are recording into the cloud. We are live on Facebook. We're live. Welcome to episode 47 of Woo. Georgie and Patty show. I am Georgie. Yay, I'm Patty. And we are here on a Friday for our weekly review to share and talk about all the, the learnings and discoveries we've had in the following week and then give you the opportunity to do the exact same thing. Yes. So my weekly core, review is awesome. Weekly review is awesome, right? Like, and I find like sometimes I have their more of a reflective week and sometimes I'm like, oh, I learned this, I learned this, I learned this. So it's always, uh, it's always cool to see what's going to show up. Yeah. So my quote of the day, it's a short one, but I liked it because I saw it yesterday. Um, this is your here. This is your now. Let it be magical. And that is by Ronnie James Dio for any of my hard rocking fans out there in the world today. <laughs> um, if you're not into the heavier music, you might not know who that is, but it's a great quote. <laughs> One more thing you might want to know about me. I can headbang with the best of them. <laughs> Ooh, things we didn't know about Georgie. That's right. Things you didn't know. <laughs> Stay tuned for more. That's right. <laughs> um, yes. Yes, my first husband was a heavy metal drummer. Oh. Actually. So there you go. Well, yeah. <laughs> there's a new learning for the week for sure. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Not only was he a heavy metal drummer, though, he also had a degree in jazz music. Which I think is what actually made him a very good heavy metal drummer was the fundamentals in jazz and the amounts of practicing that he did. So, yeah. Um, there you go. Fun facts about me and our quote of the day. And you're driving the slides because right. I didn't check again. <laughs> forget my <laughs> gotta forget my job. <laughs> right. <laughs> We have slides. <laughs> My world is just full of slides today. So many slides. So many slides. Uh, the Patty and Georgie show, the weekly review. And, um, you know, the weekly review is about learning. What did you learn this week? There are a lot of things that you can ask in your weekly review. You know, and there's a lot of things you can look at, um, you know, how are you doing with your marketing? What's happening for you? Are you making sales? Are you keeping your clients happy? Um, you know, what kind of challenges do you face? Uh, but, you know, the one that um, I think long term has the most value is like, what are you learning? What are you learning? How are you going to be better? Um, because of what happened this week. So we'll share our learnings with you and we would invite you uh, to share yours with us. If you're here live with us, you can type stuff into the chat. We'd love to hear it. Um, if you're watching the recording, we got comments. Go right ahead, uh, make comments and, uh, and share, especially if you're in the, in the cozy office space, that can be a nice thing to, uh, to do. So you have permission from us, as always, review your week or not. We highly recommend that you do. You're watching this, so you probably are. <laughs> and there you go, Georgie. You could go first. <laughs> All right. So for me, this was more of a more of a reflective week, I would say, as opposed to necessarily I learned a new thing this week. Um, but I was really thinking about with with um, kind of our life and our business and because we seem to have a lot of conversations about it this week and this integration of these of these two things and so I was thinking about you know what are the things that um, for me I was looking back at the things that I really really love to do the things that really bring me joy um, so for instance like being outside nature mountains Nepal all of those things I'm like I just literally love that stuff um, and then noticing now, especially how they are actually integrated into the work that I do. And often, I think sometimes we think we, we can't do that. If it's like something that I really love or I really enjoy, well, that's just, just kind of on the side. There's no way I can actually bring that into my business. You know, it's, it's funny. I even think about like, I do love 
love to sing and make little things up or whatever, which you hear me quite often do on the show, <laughs> making up thoughts. You hear me singing the, the things in, in my mind, which so somehow these things that, that I really love, they also integrate into kind of all of the aspects that we do in our business. I love to talk to people. I'm interested in people that do cool stuff. You see them as guests on our show that they actually our business and the show provides me an opportunity to be able to reach out and talk to people that I find really interesting and I want to learn more about. So it's not like I have to do this either or thing, but I've just been noticing this week how these things that um, some might consider just kind of fun things are really woven in to the work that I do. So I was thinking, you know, for our clients and for people that watch the show, really start to maybe just even make a list of some of these things that the things that you really, really love, the things that bring you joy, and then how can those things sort of be integrated into the work that you do? And as always, how things kind of show up, I was listening to a, um, um, I guess it's like a Facebook live show thingy, whatever, with two of my very favorite mountain climbers this morning. And the one, um, Conrad Anchor, who's probably one of, the, one of the best climbers in the world, um, he actually said on his, on, in this interview, which I thought, oh, how fitting. And he's like, when you enjoy something, it becomes your avocation. You do it because you love to do it. And if it ends up becoming your vocation, you'll be better at, at it. And you would then learn to do things in a better way. And I'm like, that's so true because we, when we bring the things in that we really, really love to do and somehow that fits with our business, I think sometimes we can be more creative in our business. We get better, not only at our work, but at our hobbies. And I think that especially when this is our life's work, that combination of things is, is pretty awesome. So it's really this awareness of what's showing up for me is a big thing. I think I'm ready for my next slide. I actually forgot what the slides are. So, <laughs> oh yeah, this one. So really this is about starting to look for, look for the clues in your life and how they're showing up. And sometimes it takes time and that time is okay. Like I, if I think about this Nepal Everest thing that I've got going on, this thing has been happening since I was five years old, you know, and then I get sprinkles of it and then something happens and something happens. And now here we are, at 48 and there's you know even bigger pieces of it coming together so it's starting to really pay attention to to the things and the clues that are showing up in your life and just noticing how the dots are starting to connect um this is so funny where i'm literally like i don't even know what my slides are but when i see them i know so this is kind of fun <laughs> um and then the other piece of this thing is to actually trust yourself because I believe when we really get quiet and we get still and we're able to actually listen to that voice inside our head and sometimes you might be thinking I have no clue how this could possibly go together or how this is going to work or maybe I'm just totally crazy for even thinking that idea and I love it like if I think this is probably absolutely nuts I'm like hell yeah that's a sign that I'm full on in and going for it because most likely it's something that really resonates with me and like we talked a lot right it's about finding the people who believe what you believe there are people that want to come along and I think I have seen this so many times um throughout my business career, whatever you want to call it, where when I really trust in those things, those things that might not, not make sense to anybody else, but I know they're so aligned with who I am and I put those things out there, that's where the flow starts to come in. Like I'm not, it feels like I'm not fighting things. It's like I'm just allowing things to happen, but there's, they so resonate with with who I am and where I'm supposed to be when I'm just really true and authentic to myself and then having the courage to follow that stuff. And I think these are the things that are, they're a bit challenging to teach. And because there's, they often don't make any logical sense at all. You know, sometimes it really is just almost that feeling or that I can't explain to you why, but I just know that it is. And then learning to trust yourself. I really think it's a lot about that, that inner knowing and that space of 
of believing in you, like knowing you, having awareness of yourself and just entrusting you and then following those little clues that show up and see what happens. I think that's why I love that we talk so much about experimentation. Nothing has to be totally final. Like it's totally, absolutely okay to experiment with different ideas. And that's, we, you hear us say it all the time without dumping a ton of money and, you know, crazy time into building super, you know, beautiful structures and those kinds of things, but just kind of putting ideas out there, see what happens, new messages, talking to people, following along um, to the clues that show up. I think that's been a, something I've noticed a lot this week because I'm like, and I know when it happens because I'm like, I wake up and I'm like, I'm so happy and I have no idea why. <laughs> I'm just excited for life and things are falling into place and they're clicking and it's like, I could be sitting here all by myself and I'm just as happy as can be, you know? Um, and sometimes happy minded can be the, be the best word for it, but literally like I wake up and just like, man, this is the best day ever, you know? And it's like, I don't even know why, but I know that it is. So it, it's, it's that space where I'm like, yeah, I want more of that. And so then I'm looking at what creates more of that. And it really is that self-knowing, that self-awareness and, and trusting what's, what's showing up. Like, I love that we do this show. I love our clients. I love the direction we're moving into and just so much amazingness. And I believe we all have those clues. It's just, we have to, we have to stop and pay attention to them. So I'm sure there's another slide coming. Um, so yeah, I put in a new permission slip too. So, you know, you have permission to integrate the things that you love and that bring you joy into your business because it really is to um, just be able to, to trust what's there, right? You can, you can, you can totally do that. Absolutely. Um, next slide. <laughs> and this was another thing that came up too was actually how do I recognize the opportunities that show up for me? And I had this conversation with two clients this week where they were like, I, I was talking about, oh, and this could be an opportunity and this could be an opportunity. And they seem totally like off of what they would be doing. Like, how do you see that, that as an opportunity? And then they're like, well, how would I recognize these things? How can I, how can I think like you think, which you probably don't want to, um, but <laughs> you probably want to stay out of that, but um, think like you think. And it's how do I recognize opportunities when I, when I, if, my, if my box of opportunities looks a certain way, how can I see things that are outside of my box um, as opportunities? And I think this comes down to, we were had this conversation this week too about different ways of marketing, where marketing can actually be so much of how we show up in our life. When we're just going on about our life, doing our life, so many opportunities can show up for marketing. When we're hanging out, for example, you know, in a climbing gym or doing the things that we love to do, we're surrounded by people who could possibly be opportunities to further, you know, maybe partners, maybe they know people, all of those kinds of things when we're just doing life. So with both of the cases this week, when I was talking to my clients, I was like, okay, this is what I would suggest you do to help you see opportunities. Um, and now I know what my next slide is, is that to actually, um, which you can switch to if you want, is to make a list. Um, <laughs> you can actually, and you, some, like you want at least 10 things on your list, and, but realistically you want to go for 100. And it's to start thinking about what are all the things you help people with in your business? What are all their problems? What are all the symptoms? What are all the things and brainstorming like crazy and even this the little the simplest little things things that you might not make sense you know, like at 10 or 100 10 is the minimum 100 is the goal um and it's not like you'll come up with 100 like on your first sitting but but really starting to remove the filter and just let yourself brainstorm like i say 100 possible ways you could actually help people with what you do and for me, like I always have a notebook and pen with me all the time. So you might 
you know, or you can use your phone, but you might be out and about and go, oh yeah, I could help with that. Oh, I hadn't thought about that. Or someone will tell you how you help them. Oh, really? Okay, I'm making note of those. Because what happens when you write these things down and you start to create a list is it actually increases your awareness for opportunities. You start to then recognize those things that you, you didn't even see before as opportunities of like, oh, I see how that might actually be able to help me. Oh, I see how this could be an opportunity for me. You know, like I was thinking about, there's a lot of um, like this video challenge that's coming up, right? Oh, you might think, nah, I'm not even sure about wanting to do video or, or you might think, oh, I wanna go so I can learn how to do video. But what if every video you posted in your challenge was about your work and about how you could help people? It's a great opportunity to get your message in front of people in a way where you might not think, oh, this is actually marketing, but it is. You know, so there's, there's tons of different things like that where you might go, oh, well, how could I use that? I'm not even part of that group. Well, join the group and share information in a different way. Um, but I guarantee if you start making a list like that, you'll start to see some of the different ways that you can um, show up. So that's a practical tip because I know everyone loves lists of 100. <laughs> Oh, and then I have a question. I think that's my next slide. Oh no, not yet. The question's coming. <laughs> um, when I, <laughs> um, when I was also in my reflections this week, I was thinking about how often we want to do things fast, 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 quick as possible, quick as possible. Let's just keep moving. Um, but when we can actually focus in, so if I think of this is my life's work and by my life's work this is going to you know my whole life this is the work i'm doing and again you've heard me talk a lot right it literally comes down to i know my why i know kind of that just cause that mission that i'm on with my work the things might change within it of how i show up with that but i know what my life's work is and then having the patience to actually develop things over a period of time and not want to switch direction too quickly. You know, and it's like, okay, if I want to, like Patty and I have been working on doing these case studies one-on-one, -on -one, we didn't go, oh, hey, we're gonna do case studies for two weeks and then we're gonna have all the information we need to know and then we're gonna jump to the next thing. And we have even been, when we're going through things where it's like, oh, okay, where we thought we were gonna move forward and they're like, not yet, hang on a second. But actually having the patience to stay there, even if it takes longer than we thought, to really get the information, to really get the data, to really give it the fair shot that it needs, and then to put everything else down, to stop trying to do too many things at once and that's what I love how we've come up with this level thing of noticing what level am I at right now in my business and what are the things I need to focus on right now and put everything else away so that I can really give it the attention it deserves. Because if I do that, then when I add more things on, I'm going to be better equipped to do that. So it's, it's, I think it goes back to the Ryan Holiday stuff. It goes back to creating really valuable work in the world. And that takes patience. And sometimes it's going forward. Sometimes it's like, ah, I think I need to go backwards a couple steps. Oh, I need to redo that. And then that comes down to listening mostly, I believe, to yourself. Knowing what's right for you and trying to stop the noise and the distraction from the outside and finding, you know, who can help me with this right now. And then once I make a decision that that's the person that's going to help me with this right now, I stop looking. And I stop trying to find eight more people that can help me with that thing I've just hired this person to help me with. Because that gets confusing too. And I find like, you know, I'm subscribed to like, to like a gazillion newsletters and lots of different things. And it's knowing when to turn that stuff off so that I can focus on where I need to go and listen to who am I actually going to give a fair shot to, to help me with this. And then if I'm finding like, I'm not sure about this, actually having those conversations with that person to say, here's where I'm feeling stuck right now. Here's where I'm kind of disagreeing with what you're saying. Help me work with this instead of going, I don't agree with you. So I'm going to go over here while I keep you like, oh my God, way too much. So really that 
like I say, I love variety. I love freedom. I love all of these things. And I know that when I do these things, these are the things that actually help me move forward in the way that I want to, to do the work that really helps um, people in the world. And I love the Zen turtle. Um, now I think I have my question. It also <laughs> came up today with um, James Clear. I love his newsletter. And so he always ends with a sort of this question to ponder. And so I was thinking about this one this morning when it came up where, you know, if someone could only see my actions and not hear my words, what would they say are my priorities? You know, and this is why I go back to, like I've been sort of journaling about this. Okay, if no one can hear me, what are my actions actually saying? And then are they in alignment with my values and how I want to show up? Am I doing the things that are in my little, my buckets, my four buckets that I have, you know, or are there things that, that would be off where they'd be like, huh, that, that, that saying and doing thing kind of matched up. So this popped up for me. I might've even been this, this morning, um, maybe yesterday, this morning, I can't remember which one, whichever one, but I was like, oh, I'm going to, I'm really going to ponder on this question because it's, it actually is something that's really, really important to me. I want to show up congruent and in integrity. And then if I'm not in some places, what are some changes that, that I might want to make to, um, to make that so? So those were, were my reflections for, for the week. A little, like I say, a little, I don't know, as I was writing it down yesterday and thinking what I was going to share today, I'm like, I don't even know how I'm going to articulate this. However, I know this is kind of what I'm feeling. So hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> oh. Oh, that's, that, that's so cool. I'm like, <laughs> so, you know, the thing you, you said about opportunities, right? About recognizing opportunities. It just made me think about um, a client that I um, worked with several years ago who did, um, she's a celebrant for uh, weddings. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was in um, the garden store one day buying, buying, <laughs> plants or flowers or something like that for one of the weddings that she was doing and she got into a conversation with somebody in the garden store just talking about the plants and the conversation and um she just in the course of the conversation um told her that she would what she was going to be doing with the plants or flowers or whatever and she was going to create this um interesting ceremony for the for the wedding that she was doing and then the person she was talking to says I'm getting married. <laughs> Anyhow, long story short, she walked out of the garden store with a new client. Um, and, you know, when we got on our call, she goes, Patty, Patty, you'd be so proud of me. I was an offer. I was an opportunist. <laughs> and it's, it's just, you know, and like, that's one of the hints for, for me. It's like, okay, there's somebody that's got it. It's like when you start thinking that way, because it's so smooth. And it's so natural and it's not, here's my card, you know, like, I mean, eventually they got to that place, but it was very organic conversation, just going about your life in a way, right? Like she could have been there choosing flowers to, to go in her, you know, on her, you know, in her front garden or something like that. But she happened to be doing it for work and she happened to kind of move the conversation in that way. And it's just like the opportunities are, all around us and they absolutely intersect with your life i just wanted to you showed that i'm like i want to share so <laughs> it's really kind of cool so uh so what did i learn this week <laughs> we are so much on the same page with our learnings this that is just hilarious so um, funny this um, is a, I don't usually get too excited about technology and, and stuff like that, but this is a, a program called otter.ai and what it does is it'll take um, uh, video or audio files and create a transcription for you. Uh, so I've um, signed up for this otter thing and for example these shows, I can take the transcript from the show, I can put it into otter and or, or the audio from the show when he creates a transcript. And the other day, Georgie and I had a meeting 
and uh, we said, let's, let's record this meeting because we're going to do some brainstorming and planning. I'm like, let's record the meeting and then we'll let Otter be the secretary and take all the notes. Like, how cool would that be? So we had this like two and a half hour meeting and I took the file and I gave it to Otter and I said, okay, what do we say? And the whole thing came back and I'm like, oh, this is like 27,000 words, 75 pages of transcript. This is what we got, right? And what I noticed from the transcript was this really cool feature um, right here that it pulls out summary keywords for your conversation. And I was like, this is so smart. We could be uh, doing transcripts of our show and we can get the themes that we talk about. Like it'll, it'll see things that we don't necessarily see ourselves. So I'm looking at this, I'm like, look at, this is what we talk about. We talk about people, we talk about clients, we talk about community and work and a fit. And look what else we talk about. <laughs> I'm, like, <laughs> I'm just like, are we actually being authentic on our show? Because I don't think that that shows up on our show transcript. <laughs> However, I just about fell off my chair um, when I saw that, uh, but I thought it was just really, really interesting uh, to, to, get these, um, to get these keywords and to recognize how often when we are in our conversations, in our meetings, we say this particular word. Um, so then I did a search through the document because I wanted to make sure that it wasn't just me. <laughs> And then I did the math. It's like, how many times did that have to show up for it to show up as a keyword? And it's like, once every five minutes, approximately. <laughs> so <laughs> this is uh, this is just a little behind the scenes uh, look at uh, what we do. But this um, this otter.ai is really kind of cool. And if you have trouble writing things if you want to do blog posts or articles or post stuff to social media and you struggle to put things to writing but you never have talkers block it can be really helpful fire up zoom get a friend get them to ask you some questions record the conversation feed it to otter let it do a transcript and then from the transcript, you can pull out some stuff to do um, social media posts or you can write an article or the content for your website or whatever. So um, I'll put that, um, this is a learning thing. This is what I learned, but at the same time, I'm gonna share it with you in case you're looking for something fun to play with. See how often you swear. Uh, <laughs> so that was, uh, that's thing number one on my list. Thing number two, I learned from my partner. Uh, <laughs> just I was talking to I was talking to a friend last night and I'm like <laughs> Georgie does this bucket thing and she, she decides what's important to her and then she schedules it in and she does stuff like like text her parents and have date night with her kids and stuff and I'm like that's so smart you know that um to look at your life as a whole decide what's important and to put it in your calendar and make it a priority and I'm just like it, it's a kind of a simple idea and yet profoundly powerful because it's just so easy um, to let go of those relationships and this was part of it I'm talking to her and she says it's been a couple of weeks since we talked and I'm like I think it's been closer than to a month and it's just like this is what happened we have a we have a call scheduled for next week because that way we can um, maintain the relationship because that's important to me my friendships are important and it's like oh you know, so having the having this stuff um, in your calendar and prioritized, uh, super, super important. So that was the, the second thing for this week. And the third thing is kind of what um, Georgie and I, <laughs> Georgie mentioned this about the slowing down and the focus and the priority and all of this. And this looking at things as a marathon rather than a sprint and the number of times I've actually heard that that particular metaphor used in conversations this week, not just with Georgie. I'm like, wow, this sure is showing up for me. Um, and why would I get some kind of a metaphor that like, what the hell do I know about running? Um, nobody's chasing me. I'm not running. Um, but, <laughs> but the idea, like I recognized in how I approach my work, and I, I very much get into this place where I have really big ideas for what I want to do. And I want to do it now. 
I want to do it like yesterday. And when we talked, what was it yesterday, day before, when we were talking about this idea of, of um, your life's work and looking at it not as what am I going to do this year, this quarter, this week, but more about, okay, what am I going to do between now and the end of my career? Um, looking at that larger kind of uh, space, it gives you a little bit more, um, a little bit more room, more room to slow down. And um, that's one of the things that, that we, uh, Georgie and I had decided um, in the last uh, week or so is to slow down. We, we wanted to move forward really, really fast in developing um, a course or a group program or something like that. And we've decided that we're going to um, take our time with it. And we actually signed up for a course and we're going to do the course and we're going to do it step by step and we're going to allow it to unfold um, more slowly um, than we originally planned. And that just feels so settled and so right. And yes, it's slower. And along with that comes kind of the acceptance that that's what this year is about is it's about some experimentation. It's about slowing things down um, and recognizing that, yeah, this is, um, this is our life's work. This is, there's a long, um, hopefully, <laughs> some <laughs> significant time <laughs> left. Um, you know, I, I look at Barbara Sharon and I'm like, well, if I, if I get to, if I get to live to be 84, like, like she did, I've got 30 years. Um, you know, that's, that's, it's a significant stretch of time and I've always admired her career and it's like yeah that's kind of what I'm wanting to do is to build something that's lasting that's got some legacy to it and that um, I can fully throw myself into and I feel like I'm there um, with where it's going I don't know exactly how it's, it's going to unfold but I do know it's not going to be done by next Tuesday um, so that kind of takes a lot of the, the pressure off to, to slow things down so this is very much one of my learnings one of those things always been aware of conceptually is something I would say to my clients um, but it came, came reflecting right back at me this week about the idea of slowing uh, of slowing down and um, as I mentioned to Georgie before we started this call that creates a good segue to talk about next week <laughs> because um, we are moving the show instead of daily. We're going to be doing the show three days a week instead, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Um, and I'd like to say that this was a decision um, based on a reflection of we need to slow down and all of that. But what it really was is, is we've got a conflict because we signed up for a course that goes on Tuesdays and Thursday, or um, yeah, Tuesdays and Thursdays in the same time slot. So it's like, okay, there's another sign. Uh, but we are going to do the show uh, three days a week now instead of five. So Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Uh, we'll talk uh, about what those episodes will be about in a moment. But for right now, um, anybody want to share? What did you learn this week? What are our, I saw some comments flashing. What is um, What do people have to say? Let us see. Helpful sharing. I use Tammy to record. Any any idea how Otter compares to Tammy? Uh, cheaper. Perfect. Um, <laughs> they have a free version, and then they have a. Um, I'm on the paid subscription, so we get six thousand minutes for like ten bucks a month. Nice. I used to use Tammy too, and then they raised the price. <laughs> <laughs> And does, does Tammy do the keywords like Otter does? I don't think so, but yeah. I can't remember. So, I love the last keyword. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was hilarious. <laughs> we thought that was pretty funny too. <laughs> the secretary did a very good job. Yeah, exactly. No hiding from that one. <laughs> exactly. Um, Ah, a new learning for the week, my heavy metal. Yeah. Um, done is better than perfect and about the camera and Zoom. Yes, I am, I'm, I'm practicing being like an arm's length away from my camera. I did that this morning too. <laughs> <laughs> and 
then I'm like, my eyes are in the wrong place. And my camera is too high. Yeah. <laughs> you keep lifting, right? It's okay. <laughs> I need a booster seat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Play with my chair. Yeah. So good. So good. Um, oh, here we go. Top learnings. Number one, the easy top tips for being on video for Zoom meetings and other video things I'm considering. Awesome. Awesome. And I, um, in our comfy, comfy, cozy office space, I actually put the link to her Facebook group, which, which is where she'll be running that video challenge if anyone else wants to start that. And I think I talked to her this morning. Um, I think it's starting or she's going to put the link for it in a couple days or something. I can't really remember. Um, but anyway, the link is in, is in the comfy space if you, if you want it. Um, yeah, I love you guys share your learning. So awesome. So awesome. And it's nice getting feedback too when we do bring on guests and you know, what kind of other things you'd want to learn what would be helpful for you? Where are you at in your business and you know, so that we can continue to keep bringing things that are valuable and relevant to to where you are because that's, you know, the other point of this. Yes, we get to talk and connect and share our ideas and thoughts. Uh, and we want to be able to bring things to you that, that matter to you not just get to hear us ramble about what we think you want. <laughs> so we love your feedback. Um, let's see, uh, I got some clarity as to which skills, <laughs> it keeps moving, go in what bucket when it comes to the VA industry. And I registered for a course to refine those skills into its own online business project management bucket. Very cool, very cool. Um, my learnings for this week. Stop talking. I forgot what I learned from Georgie and Patty and talked through everything I do. <laughs> um, make it simple for clients to pay. Give multiple options. Nice. Remain open to opportunities. Chatted this morning with an improv artist. She talked about working together. Amazing. That's super exciting. Super, super, super exciting. Um, Again, I think it's one of those things of how these different intersections of our life can come together in our business, like really cool. Okay, letting go of trying to fit in with other good programs. I kept debating getting certified for various good things, but they weren't quite the fit I needed. The, the everything already created was enticing. Yeah, that awareness and that, that kind of knowing and listening to yourself is so, so good. So good. And that, you know, I know that the number of times, you can ask my credit card about this, this one, <laughs> the number of times I've, I've paid because the, the promise is the stuff is already done for you. I've paid for templates. I've paid for conversational snips. I've paid for a lot of that kind of done for you stuff in terms of work because it can be a struggle to get the stuff out of your head and into a workable format. And when you're sitting there going, I need to create this thing, the appeal of having it done for you is so enticing. Um, like I hear that loud and clear and always and always, no matter how much I think that that person has a voice similar to mine, I look at the stuff and I go, there's no way I would send this. I will not write an email that sounds like this. I will not send this for my newsletter. This is not a good sales page for my stuff because it's not me. And, um, you know, I can't run this course exactly the way it's laid out. It's all that kind of stuff. It's, um, that's actually, I mean, I'm, I'm, creates even just a little bit of a segue for Monday's episode. Um, where I'm going to talk about Stephen Pressfield's book, The War of Art. Um, <laughs> and when you are a creative person, innovative, when you're putting work into the world, that is, um, that is a pain, <laughs> doing that kind of stuff. And it's worth it. It's also, it's also very um, fulfilling. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, I like this one. I learned I should improve sales conversation skills. I thought I was good, but realized I'm not, LOL, ouch. <laughs> what a great learning though, you know? And the thing with sales conversations is, it's just a skill, right? And it's with practice, you get better. And the great thing is you get, you can just do more and more and more of them. Um, and the better you get, the better results you'll, you'll see. And I think often 
I think this is one of those skills that people often think, oh, I have a script, that's all there is to it, I follow it and I do it. And there are so many nuances that happen in human conversations that um, there are a lot of almost micro skills that happen when we're having sales conversations or conversations in general with people. So it's, um, it, it's, it's often we think it's one tiny little thing and it's really, it's really a big piece. So to become a really great communicator with people, especially in this space of sales conversations and sharing what we do with people, it's, there, there's there's skill there and that and to increase that skill takes practice so amazing amazing learning and when you're committed to doing that you'll you'll get there totally mm -hmm. so good. awareness of the problem is the first step towards solving it exactly exactly and you know it's like that's georgie going awesome um but but yeah. really when we discover like wow this is a problem and i've been doing this for a long time it's like even this like marathon sprint thing that i talked about today it's like i've been doing that for a long time <laughs> and it's, it's like it'd be really easy for me to go wow you've just been screwing stuff up for a long time and instead it's like wow awesome amazing now i can change now i can do something different yeah uh, oh this is a good one i keep i think i said that about all, everyone i've read so far so they're all good and i'll probably keep saying that so uh i learned i need to let go of past things i put a lot of work into and it's still attached to even a business card that I still want to keep. I love the design and have a thousand of them, but the info is no longer quite right about what I want to offer now. Mm. Oh, ouch. Sunk costs though. So, Sunk you know, costs. That's going to be a topic for you. It is going to be a topic for me. I will absolutely cover um, the idea of sunk costs, but we tend to get attached to things that we've invested time or money or effort in to and it can really hold us back but it is a fallacy and if you really want to know about it you can google sunk cost fallacy um, to get some information about it and i'll talk about it but as much as it's a fallacy as much as it's an issue there is that emotional attachment that happens and uh you uh um it's wise to pay attention to it yes yes <laughs> Um, I paid so much for done for me stuff as well. So much stuff, not good for me and my people. I sure learned a lot. Yeah. So many things. Um, Patty, if you hadn't shared and described so well about being tempted by and trying to fit into other programs, I don't think I would have seen it so clearly in myself. I still want to take great learnings from the programs, but I don't need to force myself into being a certified whatever. Exactly. Yes. Uh, yes. Hold feedback, and I'm getting there. How can I improve sales conversation skills? Book How much app. time you got? <laughs> <laughs> practice, practice is kind of thing number one. And honestly, um, book a session with Georgie. Pay Georgie for a consulting session, and she will get you fixed up. Yes. Yes. There's, there's, there's so, there's so many aspects, ex, aspects to a sales conversation. Um, yeah. And, and I'm super happy to have a conversation with you to see where kind of where you feel that you're, you're stuck at. And then we can kind of see what would be the next, what would be the next best steps for you to, to fix those pieces. So um, yeah, for sure. Um, improve self conversation immensely by doing a role play with Patty and Georgie. Nothing else made such a difference. Um, the arm length distance from the camera thing is so working for you. <laughs> <laughs> is it better than my giant head? <laughs> it's a professional, professional. Man. I just all self conscious about my bald spot. <laughs> my stripe. <laughs> I need a hat. <laughs> oh my gosh, you can start wearing different hats on the show. So go fix it with, with your headset. It'd be hilarious. <laughs> then it's going to be summer though, and your hair will be so hot. you will be like, oh, I'm sweating with my hat. It's so crazy. <laughs> um, so good. So good. Um, wow, this has been awesome sharing. Like, really, really, really appreciative of. Um, all the, all the sharing today. It's really, really good. Cause I think we, the more we share, the more we learn from each other too. And then 
it also helps to really integrate the reflections and the learnings that we that we personally had. So that's really, really awesome. Let's see. It makes me happy. Um, to add to my happy days and happy lives and whatever I have going on right now. Um, it's good. It's really awesome. <laughs> I love it. Okay. <laughs> Never heard the phrase sunk costs. It's good to have a name for it. The business cards were created and bought over seven years ago, uh, by the way. Okay. Um, I'm not usually into this game of um, I can top that. Um, however, just sharing. I have a domain name that I bought 12, 13 years ago that I am still paying for every year when it comes up for renewal because I'm like, oh, I should really do this um, because I paid $3,500 for a logo and branding and I like the logo and the branding <laughs> for $3,500 um, and I will never do this thing. I don't think I will ever do it, but I am continuing to pay for it and every year I go, oh, it's sunk cost, Patty, and then you know, it's like, oh, but it's only another 30 some bucks or whatever to pay for the due to Made names, so I keep on doing it. Um, I know about it. Doesn't make me immune. <laughs> just in case. Just in case. And I'm thinking that everybody who does anything that's creative has that. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It's, a it's, like, it's like keeping stuff around because um, you're sure that you're going to use it again. <laughs> mm -hmm. I might want to read that again. I just might need it. Just a little longer. <laughs> oh, that's a really good slide deck. I should, I'll probably use that one again. It's like we have, what, 47 slide decks from this show. <laughs> I've got hundreds and hundreds of slide decks on my computer. Because I won't part with any of them. I might use it again. It's like I won't. <laughs> yeah, just in case. Just in case. I know. So crazy. So crazy. The struggle is real. <laughs> so real. So absolutely real. So yeah well should we tell them what's happening next week next week you already shared you're doing the um i'm the doing war, the war of art war uh, of stephen art. press field um monday yes and uh wednesday i'm gonna talk about how to tell your clients they're wrong <laughs> and this is really about <laughs> this is it this will kind of feed into your sales conversation pieces as well, but it really is about how to have conversations with people when you want to suggest a new way of doing things or, you know, something that you think might be a better fit with people. So how do we do that in a way where A, people will listen to us, where they're open to hearing the conversation um, so that we can actually, really it's about having a, having a dialogue and to help people. So I'm going to talk about that on Wednesday. And then Friday, we'll be back with our week in review and should be interesting because we start our course next week. So who knows what we'll learn um, next week. Stuff. Stuff. Yeah. Um, let's say, oh, by the way, name entertainment from last week is slowly working for me. Thank you again. Awesome. Awesome. You know, one of the biggest things I think what, when I think about the, the, my life's work and the things I do is it's so, so important that the things that we share are useful and that you're actually able to take it and do something with it. Because the reality is if we just talk and talk and talk and no one ever does anything with it and it doesn't make a difference and it doesn't make an impact, to me, it's kind of pointless. Um, which is one of the things I love about working with Patty is that we're both on that same page where we, we are um, attached to the outcome. We are attached to the results when we're working with people um, and or even just when we're sharing information. If the information we're sharing isn't useful to you and no one's doing anything with it, what is the point in us actually being here? So I really, really appreciate the fact that you're sharing that you're taking this information and you're actually doing something with it and it's making a difference for you. So I'm very, very, very thankful that you are taking the time to, to share that you are doing that. Oh, and I just wanted to add for the sales conversation thing, the YouTube channel, look for the recording uh, that Georgie made on the, the five C's of this, the three C's region. of the sales conversation. Yeah, exactly. That you'll, you'll probably find that um, super helpful. Yeah. Um, for the workshop today, for people who are uh, signed up for the workshop, the break is going to be approximately three hours into it, somewhere around uh, around there. 
and, yeah. and uh, yeah, and that all that all starts in forty minutes for those of you who yes. have signed up for yes. the uh, for the workshop. <laughs> And we do have, like I see there for the index for all our shows, if you go to our YouTube channel, I do see that Patty has actually created some playlists there so that it might be easier to find um, find some of the things there. And eventually we will get better at putting show notes and descriptions on them. It just hasn't happened yet, but but they're there. But yeah, and there's there's not, I'm, I mean, yeah, I guess there are lots. <laughs> there are 40 some whatever. Yeah, well, not yet, because I haven't yet. uploaded yeah. this week's, but, but there's... Fair. But the, the sales conversation one is, um, I think you can even search to find yeah. it. Yeah. And if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, please subscribe to it. We need 50 more people so we can actually give it a decent URL name instead of that big, huge, long number. Um, and it helps people to, to, to find it. Because I had someone that was searching for it the other day and couldn't find it. And then I had to go find the thing. So if you know anybody or if you haven't, please subscribe to our channel. Um, could you have a playlist, uh, for, playlist the for the session? training sessions? Yeah, I'll make one of those. Yes. I'll, I'll set that oh, up. Oh, that's um, really good. Yeah. Yeah. Good idea. Yeah. Because I've got the interviews and I've got the book reviews on playlists already. So I'll, I'll do one for the training sessions. Yeah. Try to start organizing things a little bit. Awesome. Um, yeah. Make it easier <laughs> to find stuff. Easy to find, easier to share. We do, we do appreciate, um, the sharing a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. So, yeah. All right. Well, we're going to end a little bit early because, like, we got a workshop to do. So, um. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, um, thank you so much for those who uh, are talking about sharing yeah. our stuff. We really, really, really appreciate that. Um, uh, feel free to invite people into the comfy office space as well to attend these shows live to watch the videos um, whatever um, it's also um, yeah appreciate it and yes. uh, we we'll will see, we'll see some of you at 11 <laughs> <laughs> we'll see some of you at 11 uh, we'll see the rest of you Monday Monday um, Monday have uh, have a fantastic uh, rest of your day. Enjoy your weekend, and um, see you Monday. Same bad time. Same bad channel. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Bye now. Bye. <laughs>